Subnautica is a survival and exploration game about being trapped on an aquatic alien planet. If you ask me, or many other fans of the game, the exploration is really the key point here. The game basically just drops you in the middle of a huge ocean and lets you have at it, with basically no direction whatsoever. At least, at first. Over time, the game drip feeds you information through the radio, which provides coordinates of interesting sites and things to explore to help move the story along. Putting all the amazing exploration this game has aside, let's talk about the survival elements for a minute. What do you do in your typical survival game? Collect food, water, sometimes sleep. Basically, just try not to die as those numbers keep ticking down. And that's pretty much how you spend the first hour or so of Subnautica. Just surviving, getting a feel for the surroundings, getting your materials in order, and crafting a couple things. And then from that point, the game gives you access to the Habitat Builder, which is what you'll use to make bases. And you can make bases basically anywhere in the entire world of Subnautica, with a few limiting factors like hull integrity as you go further down, and power. Bases are kind of central to the gameplay of Subnautica because it's where you create things, it's where you hang out in your free time, it's where you eat, it's where you dock your vehicles, it's where you build vehicle upgrades and parts. The game revolves quite a lot around building a nice base and using it to explore from. But what if we just skipped that altogether and said, let's not build any bases and try to beat the entire game? If you're familiar with Subnautica, this comes with some limitations. First of all, it means no easy food or water, because you can't just grow plants, use snack machines, water machines, or water filtration. It also means you can't hop into a safe base as a little breather in some more of the iffy areas of the game. And last, but probably most importantly, is you cannot build a moon pool. And a moon pool is where you upgrade your vehicles, which means you can't get the depth modules for the Seamoth or the Prawn to take them down to deep depths. If you're not aware, in the past, I did make a video where I tried to beat the game without using any vehicles whatsoever. I'll have a link to that video down below if you're interested, but the results were kind of surprising. Coming back to Subnautica a few months later, I figured a no basis challenge run would be pretty interesting. So without further ado, let's just jump into it and see how far we can get. I play the beginning of the game pretty much how any other Subnautica run would be played. Collecting materials, building the basics, using the life pod quite a lot to craft basically everything. This is also sort of limiting because I do not have a base to make a modification station. I can't make any of the upgrades to anything like the upgraded knife or the upgraded tanks. Other than that, the early game is pretty standard. The main thing I want to get a hold of really quick is the sea glide, which lets me move around faster, and that's going to be my main method of transportation all the way until I can get my hands on a cyclops, which is pretty far off at this point. You see, in order to get a cyclops, I first have to scan every single part of it, and the pieces are kind of scattered all around the map. Some of them are kind of annoying to get to with the sea glide. They're pretty far off or they're pretty deep down, which means oxygen is an issue. I can't just build a base far down to hop into for oxygen whenever I need it. Another major piece of equipment, at least in my opinion, is the beacons. Subnautica has no map whatsoever, so I usually place beacons in a lot of key points to help navigate. If you're playing Subnautica without beacons, you either have an amazing sense of navigation or you're going to get lost quite a lot. So it's good to drop beacons in a couple key points, like the opening of Jelly Shroom Caves right here. Moving on from the early game, I now had enough tools at my disposal to explore wrecks and get some more blueprints. After a little while, I had all the blueprints required for the Seamoth, and I was getting kind of tired of using the Sea Glide to go everywhere. So I built a mobile vehicle bay and made a Seamoth. Now I could move around a good bit faster. Having already beaten Subnautica many times, I knew my next destination was going to be Jelly Shroom Cave. The main problem here is that the Seamoth with no depth modules can't go deep enough to reach the base in Jelly Shroom Cave. See, the base in Jelly Shroom Cave is about 230 meters down, and the Seamoth only goes down to 200 meters. You can't even get too close to the base because the overhangs in the cave go down pretty low. So I drove in there, and I abandoned my Seamoth, and I swam to the base with the Sea Glide. I didn't have enough oxygen or even a backup tank. I knew I was going to die at this point, but I was still able to collect all the things I needed inside the base, and dying just respawns you at the life pod. Having succeeded there and then dying, I continued my quest for Cyclops parts. I took my Seamoth over to the Mushroom Forest, which has a lot of Cyclops parts. Next up on the story objective list was Mountain Island. On the outskirts of Mountain Island are more Cyclops parts, and I also needed to be here for the eventual quest, so it was good to get two for one done. I took a quick break from scanning Cyclops parts and collecting materials to run into the base and start the main quest line. Stuck my hand in this alien scanner thing, got stabbed, and it told me I had the virus. Basically, you're infected with this virus, and you need to get cured before you can get off the island, because otherwise the giant gun will shoot you down. The two main objectives for beating the game are get clear of the virus and craft a rocket to leave the planet. But there are many steps along the way to accomplish both of those. 
took a quick break from being underwater the entire game and headed up to the top of Mountain Island. I collected a bunch of materials there and I did not open the teleporter because I didn't have an ion cube on me. Not that you even need to open any teleporters to complete the game because everywhere that a teleporter brings you is somewhere you can just swim to manually. After collecting all the blueprints for the Cyclops and quite a lot of materials I was able to craft one and I finally had a nice base of operations. Inside the Cyclops there's a small amount of room where you can actually build things. This allows me to get around most of the problems that I had earlier on. I can make a modification station, I can make a grow bed for plants, I can do all sorts of stuff. But the main benefit this provided me was lockers. It was becoming a huge pain having to store all my stuff in water lockers outside of the life pod and just sift through all of those for the right things whenever I needed to find something. Now I had tons of storage space available on the Cyclops so I could get rid of all the water lockers. I spent a little time tricking out the Cyclops with all the stuff that I would need for a base so I wouldn't have to go back to the life pod ever again. I also used this opportunity to explore some of the wrecks and the coordinates that I got from the radio. Got a couple more blueprints. I pretty much scanned everything even though I wasn't going to build 90% of the things. I don't know, just that completionist sort of mindset. Taking another break from being underwater for extended periods of time, I checked out the plant island. I'm not sure the exact name of this island or what the community calls it, but it's the one with all the plants on it, so I'm calling it Plant Island. Here there's a couple more bases with lots more blueprints to scan, as well as some plants you can pick and grow inside your cyclops or your base, if you had a base, which I don't have in this run, so I'm just going to make a small grow bed inside the cyclops to grow some of these plants. After that I decided to take my cyclops down to the deep bulb zone, which was kind of annoying. It's very hard to take your cyclops straight down if you're not using the cameras, which I didn't realize you could switch to the bottom camera while still driving at the same time. I thought you had to stop driving while you're on the bottom camera. I don't know why it took me this long to realize that, but I took my cyclops all the way down so I could head to the last base before the Lost River. Took a very quick swim over there, the crab squids were not happy with me. I basically followed the same plan as I did in Jelly Shroom Cave, which is just scan everything, collect everything possible, and run out of oxygen. But there was a slight difference this time. I had an upgraded oxygen tank, and I parked my cyclops not too far away, so I was able to make it back in time without suffocating. I decided to make a quick stop in the blood kilp zone to pick up some materials. I always park near the edge of it and then sea glide down and try and grab some stuff so that I don't have to deal with the reapers that are floating around in there. Continuing with progressing the story forward at a very rapid rate, I decided to make for the Aurora next. The Aurora has a ton of blueprints and stuff you can't find anywhere else, but the main thing you really need is a Neptune rocket blueprint. It's always real spooky going to the Aurora because you can't really see anything and there's reaper leviathans at both sides of it. Even here, you can see that the Reaper Leviathan yelled at me, but he didn't actually chase me down, so I was okay. I made my way through the Aurora, putting out fires, scanning things, fixing switch boxes, you know, all of that stuff that you do on dry land in this game. I got the materials needed for the prawn suit, I have no idea why, I just felt like scanning everything I came past. And most importantly, I picked up the plans for the Neptune rocket, which I'm going to be building at the very end of the run. Since I had a Cyclops and I was able to put a modification station inside, I was able to craft the depth modules for the Seamoth, which meant I could take it all the way into the Lost River. I went through the Blood Kelp Zone, avoided some Reapers, and down into the Lost River. While in the Lost River, I stopped by all the alien facilities, picked up some ion cubes and some tablets, and made my way forward. After that, I took a detour to the Bulb Zone. Since the Seamoth can only go down 900 meters, and that's not enough to get to the Lava Zone, I had to take my Cyclops down there. I intended to take my Cyclops through the Lost River entrance in the Bulb Zone, which is a lot bigger than the Blood Kelp entrance. Unfortunately, it's also a lot darker and harder to find. So I took my Seamoth, which is a lot more nimble, and placed some beacons around so I could navigate myself. After that, it was time to head all the way down to the bottom. Avoided the leviathans on the way, I guess I got lucky or something. They're just kind of spooky the first time you play the game, but they're not really that dangerous. Parked my cyclops kind of near the edge of the lava zone where the sea emperor leviathan patrols and got those stupid leech things all over it. I slashed a couple off, but they just kept attaching after 10 seconds or so, so I stopped wasting my time hitting them. The Sea Emperor Leviathan gave me a couple dirty looks, but he never actually came over to my Cyclops, so I was okay. From there I wanted to be nimble and stealthy, so I took my Sea Glide from the Cyclops and went straight for the Lava Castle. On my way to the Lava Castle I picked up a bunch of Kyanite, which you need for a lot of crafting stuff later on. From there I took my Sea Glide and headed all the way down to the Containment Facility. The Sea Emperor Leviathan saw me, I was like 50 feet away from the entrance of the facility, and he ate me. 
That was really unfortunate, but the good part was that I spawned back at the Cyclops. If it had spawned me back at the life pod, that would have been disastrous. I would have needed to make an entirely new Cyclops to get back down to the lava zone and get all my items back. But luckily I wasn't that far away, so I just took the Sea Glide out and went for the same maneuver once again. This time I was able to sneak by the Leviathan and make it into the facility. I did the whole story segment with the Mother Leviathan and I went off to collect the plants for the serum. This went pretty much as expected, you go through the teleporter, you collect the plants, you head back in, and you make the serum. So from there I finished the main quest with the mother, the babies leave, she dies, and you get cured. I went back to the big gun facility, got tested again, and I was cured. The gun turned off and I was ready to build the rocket. There was one major problem though. My Cyclops was still at the bottom of the lava zone, and my Cyclops had all of my items on it. I was going to need all those items to craft the Neptune rocket of course, so I needed to take my Cyclops all the way back to the surface. So I snuck the Cyclops out of the lava zone, past the Sea Emperor Leviathan, back up through that hole, past the Ghost Leviathan, through the Bulb Zone, and all the way back near the safe shallows where I started. From there I was back to collecting tons of materials to craft parts of the rocket. I built each part in sequence and realized one more major problem. I didn't have enough ion cubes to make the ion batteries needed to power the rocket. Now if you didn't know, there's only a limited number of ion cubes scattered throughout the world in Subnautica, and the only way to get an infinite number of ion cubes beyond that is to use the prawn's drill arms in that final facility. But I didn't have a prawn, and I can't attach drill arms to it because I didn't have a moon pool and a base. Now, I had already exhausted all the main ion cube sources that I knew about, until I remembered that one hidden one near the sparse reef. Most players will never stumble across this cache playing the game normally, but there is a bunch of ion cubes in a small little facility that doesn't really have much else. It's also kind of close to the dunes, so if you go too far out of the way, you're going to get destroyed by reapers. I was able to collect a bunch of ion cubes there, and that gave me all the materials I needed for the full rocket. Eventually I had the whole rocket crafted and ready to go. I built it right near the safe shallows in a central location, so I had a good view of the entire world from the top. I headed into the rocket, made a nice little time capsule for someone to find, made sure to include those ion cubes in case they're doing a challenge run of their own. All that was left was to start the rocket and enjoy the ending cinematic. Two, one. All in all, I'd say this run was a great success. I was able to beat the entire game of Subnautica without building any bases whatsoever. It was a little tougher, especially early on not having any bases, having to go back to the life pod for basically everything, and especially not having mobile storage. That was a huge pain. I made a lot of trips back and forth, which wore on my nerves, but eventually it paid off when I got the Cyclops. As opposed to my last run where I didn't use any vehicles and had to bend the rules just a tiny bit, this one was completely doable. Overall, I would say that run was a little more challenging and definitely way more time consuming. So if you're interested in seeing more of a challenging run or a more in-depth video on how that would be done, give that one a watch. After beating Subnautica about four times at this point, I think it's good to give it a rest for a little while and maybe do some challenge runs in some other games or work on some more analytical videos like I've been doing lately. Either way, there's going to be a lot more cool content coming up in the near future, so stick around if you're interested in that stuff and I will see you guys next time.